Hello guys, welcome to this video. This is a free clip from Nuke 707, Deep Compositing in Nuke, which is a course that just released for people who want to learn this skill for feature films or just want to add it to their workflow. If you're an effects artist or a lighting artist trying to you know, see how deep can be stretched uh, creatively. So this is just showing a few of my creative thought process around look developing a shot like this. So it's not actually talking about deep in this specific YouTube video, but the course does cover a lot of deep techniques uh, to use a lot of elements and also how to utilize the CG elements you already have in a number of ways to actually stretch them further, if you, such as if you have volumetrics uh, and how to push those things around to control the contrast of a shot. So that's the big project that's included in this course, but there's actually a number of other projects that we go through to explain a variety of use cases like taking the CG environment and doing deep height fog, deep hazing. Uh, there's a variety of techniques involved there, as well as some things we can do with live action elements uh, included. So if you want to check it out, that's there for you. If not, that's cool too. Just hit the thumbs up on this video. It really helps make the free content for YouTube. So. Thanks so much, and the video is going to start now. So we're going to talk about how to go from the raw renders, which is essentially this, into the final composite, which is like this. And so there's a lot of changes that are involved here. Whenever you do these kind of uh, A and Bs, it always looks like one color grade, um, even though your script is absolutely enormous and there's like you know hundreds of color corrections and many, many elements. So uh, it's good to start to look into the details and, and think about what are the things that are useful to think about when we look at a raw render like this and start to dissect this in a way that makes sense. So essentially, one of the problems with this shot is if you just deep merge everything together, this is a very chaotic shot. There's lots going on. And to get the contrast right is the most difficult thing in this composite. So if you go through and actually do this whole project yourself, you're going to see how many layers of grades you're going to have to actually do. But that's part of the challenge. And I think that's also part of the fun of doing really big CG shots is figuring out those very small contrast adjustments and stacking them together to make things work. So I can show you a few frames of before and after. And then I'm going to show you some work in progress uh, frames as well to show you sort of the direction and how to build it up. And we'll get more specific as we actually look into the composite and things like that. So this is the raw. If we just like deep merge the smoke over without the 2D explosion and fires and sparks fire, uh, glow, um, all of those things that we do. And and this is kind of what it looks like. You can see it looks kind of very video gamey. There's not the most aesthetic contrast. And this is after. So you can see there's all kinds of things we're doing here. We're adding the explosion into the deep. We're doing these sparks that are falling. We have falling fire. We have different spark elements underneath. We have some launching sparks on the frames before. So we have these tendril sparks being launched out. And then we have even some lens dirt that's being lit up and the lens dirt's animated as the explosion is coming over. We have the reflection in the glass of all of these, these things happening. So that means we're using um, a projection or a 3D setup to get that reflection since it's an element. So we're actually bringing that reflection in and matting it out so there's lots and lots of things going on here. Uh, so I'm just going to keep doing a walkthrough. Some people may want this and might not. So just to throw it out there again, um, generally I do this just for the people who want to see my thought process. Uh, so even here we have like specular highlights, like look how bright the sky is in our composite. So that means we need to start pinging out the top of the snake, start to get a little bit of contrast. If you look at the original snake and we look at the contrast of the building this is actually a big mismatch of what you'll need to do you can see that uh this just feels generally a bit more contrasty and this feels a little bit more flat overall so a big part of this is just going to be getting some directionality to this and getting those black levels and the shadow region to feel more connected to the building so you see in my composite i'm starting to ping out the highlights uh, brightening up the sky and then darkening underneath and that's what's going to make these things actually sit together so that is a big part of uh, what you'll have to do with the contrast. So again, we want to read the snake the whole shot. So part of what I'm doing here is we're compositing explosion, but I'm also taking the snake element and pinging out the metal uh, render passes in there so we can see the snake moving inside. So you see, if you look close, we can see the details inside. And that's pretty tricky to do because look at our raw render. We're just, if you're just putting that smoke over, you're not going to see anything. We can just step frame by frame. You see nothing happening here versus here. We're still getting all those elements, plus we're trying to get that snake being seen all the way through. It's really a difficult thing to do. So it's all of those things in combination that start to make the shot come together. Um, and then we're also doing you know, details like, uh, if we look here, 
um, a lot of these pieces of glass, for example, if we see here, there's almost no light source. So we're actually pinging out these glasses using normal passes or relighting uh, to bring out those shards that and make that contrast against the black. So we're actually, you know, th that's not a CG element. We're just using the elements that are there in a new layering technique, uh, just a layer on top and make it feel more complex than the render we've been given, which is a big part of CG compositing, is to use what's there and then try to make it look as good as you possibly can. So uh, continuing, we can see the same thing going on here, all kinds of things going on with relighting, uh, with different reflections in the windows, uh, same techniques being applied here. Uh, and overall, just if we look at the original, especially on these center frames, so I'm going to keep passing through the frames because it's almost like two different shots. Like we have the explosion and then we have like the building collapsing at the end. So you can almost think of it like two shots. This at the end, you really don't read the silhouette of the snake. So a big part of what you're gonna to need to do is get fires and use the elements to read the silhouettes. We wanna make sure we understand the story that this thing is ripping through. And in this, you can't really see where everything is. So especially up in these areas where we can use deep transforms, we can bring those pieces of glass up to bright brighten them so they look like they're reflecting the sky. Uh, we could also, uh, I mean, the really big part was just like this, this part is, is like you need to have fire and then you need to make sure that casts light onto the snake and you also want to have some fires behind the snake as well so you can you know see the edge because if we do orange and if we do orange here it's going to feel like that's blending into the edge whereas it shouldn't be because it's kind of sitting on top of the building so what i did i chose to put the light behind the snake just so it feels like it's sitting on top and that's a big part of making that feel like um, more 3D as well. So here we can play some big fires, we can do all kinds of things. And this is really up to your interpretation as well. You really don't have to copy this shot. This could be a nighttime shot, frankly, like because it was lit without direct sunlight, you could actually composite this like a very nighttime shot as well. Uh, it be a bit more challenging because of some of the uh, deep you know, edge stuff that with the smoke, but you could do it, uh, it would be more challenging. But uh, we'll just continue explaining here. I did this really hot metal. So I, there's, the reason I chose to make the snake kind of ha having a red, like burning face was was this whole reason of reading the shot. Um, just because I thought that the shot read better with like melting metal uh, versus just everything metallic. So because I chose this direction, we can put like melted metal edges all the way along um, the pieces and, and some of the pieces falling down will have hot metal edges and we can use some different techniques like P, uh, P noise and things like that uh, in combination with deep bubbles. So I'll show that technique a little bit later where we can use deep mats in combination with uh, P noise. So this is kind of what we got going on here. And then we're using the elements as creatively to try to convey the story here. So like as the building starts to like snap, kind of stacked, I think it's a three or four elements even just here, just to get the snapping, um, just to make it feel, just to read that that moment as things start to break apart. You know, there's nothing really happening here. You know, even though it's something really cool, the simulation is fantastic, but uh, it would just be cool to have more things happening. So that's kind of uh, the direction. Um, and again, look at the look at the windows brightness. We're, we're cranking up the contrast on the shot. This is a super high contrast grade, almost like uh, Transformers style, where they, they really punch the contrast. And so that's a big part of this. So again, doing A and B, uh, you can see the flames here, still trying to read the silhouette. A lot of these elements you're gonna need to keyframe over time. You notice like here, we don't see the fire on the edge, but over time as the snake goes in a little bit more, we start to see more of those flames. So a lot of this is just, you need to have lots of patience and just sit there and figure out good timing on the elements. Um, and also like exploding sparks. So we have like fire, but then I have like big embers that are shooting off, which gives it more motion. So it kind of looks like, uh, yeah, just things shooting off, which is I think a pretty cool effect. So we'll continue forward uh, just to go towards the end of the shot here. Uh, the end of the shot, we have the smoke actually coming back out as it's starting to collapse here. So what I actually did was I keyframed the deep data of the smoke and transformed it slightly forwards just so we could keep reusing that simulation element over and over. And that's a really good technique. Like, you know, we talked about it earlier, but I'm showing you where I use these techniques on this specific shot. So uh, if you feel like it's not dusty enough, you can always pull the element or push it in, etc. And that's a good way to just drive the contrast. So we're very contrasty over here, but we lose some contrast here. So your eye is going to be going towards, you know, the whole building tipping this way. 
and actually that's actually what i want because some of the spark element looks really cool at the end so as it like breaks apart we have like these i added a, a showering spark element so i added some of these elements but some of them are already in the cg sparks that we get so it's a combination and then the bigger chunks are, are just part of the render so we just have these dark pieces but if we use pinoise on them we can actually make them look like that's melting and that gives us like the bigger chunks mixed in with the small. So the size variation is interesting to look at. Um, and that's kind of how I was thinking about all of this. So we'll just continue uh, just to keep checking out different portions of this. You know, as it's going in, we're having an exploding edge because all this metal is being completely destroyed. So again, not just adding the elements, but we got to do the interactive lights, the specular hits, the showering sparks. Uh, and then the the burnt and crumpled edges. So there's probably you know five or six elements. We have heat distortion. We have a little bit of smoke that's coming out. The smoke is behind the heat distortion, so it's subtle, but it's still uh, it does make a difference uh, to have those things. Um, probably the tricky, the two trickiest things, like I said, in this composite is the overall contrast is is pretty tricky, and then just the, the explosion is uh, fairly. Uh, challenging because there are five or six layers that you need to get to get it to start to look uh, kind of cool so that is the main ideas I'll just show you guys some other um, examples I guess I explained most of it here but just to show some like earlier renders and then like later on so this was like an early comp um, and like really really early like just like when you're starting to get the elements in there and I'll show you like the difference between early comp and then like sort of final comp So here's something where like yeah, you have all the elements in there But like it's just so messy and it's it's hard to read and, and things like that And so if we look at the final comp it just you start to get like pieces of glass so You start to get layers of contrast for example So we have like a black thing and some and then we just have a bunch of white dots everywhere Which doesn't read separate from the snake itself. So it's cool to add some color like those are the pieces of the glass reflecting back the spark colors. So that's the kind of thought process that I'm having there is like, if your eye doesn't read something or you are you on your first read, you, you're not understanding it. This is where you want to start to introduce more colors or more elements, or even if we could put a smoke element behind some of these, we got to do something to make that read better. And so that's my, my thought process on you know these two frames here. Um, there's some other frames that I, I chose uh, again, this was, I already explained this, where the silhouetting of the edges. Um, this is another one where I had started the explosion, but there's this is not what I would consider like a final glow. And sometimes things become a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit blurry when you have things like this. So if I compare it to the, the end result, we can get this like broader and hotter feeling. Like this is a massive explosion. We, see, we should see all kinds of diffusion and and more bounce light on the the surface of all of this glass uh coming towards us so that's essentially this is like the final render where it feels very very hot like this is a huge hot explosion with heat distortion and uh glow towards the camera it should be overexposed and lose crazy amount of detail and that's uh you can see the difference here between like an earlier one and the later one so here again uh earlier one a little bit later one you see how it's it's overexposed right but this, this just feels even more overexposed. Like you just need to push it uh, to make it really feel like a really hot explosion. And uh, that diffusion too really helps the, the uh, broader glow. So I always think of glows in layers. I never think of glow as an exponential glow. Uh, the, the exponential glow will help your edges sit in uh, for sure. Like you absolutely need it. Otherwise your explosions are gonna look totally cut out. Um, but I think of it, it's it's good to think of it in layers. I think of, I usually think of glows as um, maybe two to three layers of glow. You have like a base glow, you have a broad glow, and then sometimes your glows blur the image a little bit too much. So that's where you wanna add things on top of the glow, like maybe shards of glass or sort of a smoke that catches highlights, uh, you know, things like that. You wanna layer things on top to catch uh, different forms. Otherwise a glow, it can easily smooth out your image a little bit too much. So here again, this is an early render. This is a second pass at it, adding some manual uh, color correction to the glass around it. You see like, look how bright this is. This should, should be reflecting onto this glass and all of these little pillars and things like that. So essentially that's the difference. We, start, we go from something like that to something like that. And you see, again, thinking about where the light is traveling and traveling through, um, you know, 
you know, for even from this one to this one, you see, this is what I was talking about, stacking contrast, where this does feel very blown out, but just adding those, those shards over the top is what makes it cool. So we'll talk probably more about that once we, you know, talk about the specifics of the nodes and stuff. Um, I'm, I know I'm talking to more experienced people generally here, so I won't go like to walk through on every single node, but uh, I guess if people want it, I can. You can always reach out in the email. So this is uh, again earlier comp. Here's another example of contrast, where you you feel like you have all your elements here, but there's still just some things with the contrast that could be improved. It's just something about it, it feels a little bit cut out. It doesn't feel like it's sitting into the building and and things like that. And sometimes it's really hard to know exactly what to do with an image, especially after you have spent you know 50 hours on a composite or whatever. Uh, you could easily spend especially without a render farm on the shot, you can easily spend 100 hours doing this shot. Uh, that's just a heads up. Like that's the kind of time that these these things take. And that's very, very normal. Uh, I wouldn't expect less than a week of work on a shot like this in, in a studio. They're going to go through many, many iterations. Uh, so practicing that will, um, and struggling through that will help. So this is the general, uh, this was an earlier pass, I suppose. And then this is starting to pull some of those deep elements back out towards the end. So you can see it just feels more integrated. Everything just sits together. It doesn't feel like so much like something is sitting on top. You see how this just feels like there's something darker and maybe more dark and maybe more neutral on top of something more blue. And, you know, it just feels there's something missing here in the contrast. The contrast is still kind of nice, but, you know, it feels more lifted back here, which is kind of nice because it's further up and there should be some more smoke and stuff. But I think generally uh, this version looks much better. You start to see like more little pockets of smoke. You'd expect tons of dust in the air. Think about how many particles would be in the air from this huge thing happening. So making it more lifted towards the end makes a lot of sense. And then this is these, this is the end comp here. So let's just see. So this is 1185. This should be... 1185 as well. I'm not sure why. I think this might be a different frame. So we'll just try to find the frame here. So this is the final comp and this was the uh, other one. So we'll just try to find it. Yeah, something like that. So, and then, okay, so here's first version. Probably not the first version, by the way. It's probably just somewhere where I rendered it, but this was like a work in progress. This is another work in progress, working on the contrast. But then there's one more thing we can do and we can pop out the contrast side even more. So look at the final version. We wanna make it feel, we still wanna keep that metallic feeling, you know what I'm saying? So uh, we're, it's, it's all so, such subtle adjustments, like pushing one thing forward and pushing one thing, one thing back. For example, watch the building and watch the snake. Right now, it feels like it's kind of inside or this isn't what's sticking out even though it's 3D. So flipping the contrast, you see how this building gets slightly darker and this gets much brighter with the specular and now it just starts to feel more like a 3D metal shiny thing in there versus where it's very dark. And also everything, we get a little bit more dusty. I pulled out the smoke a lot at the end on this side just because I thought the asymmetry and the contrast looked pretty cool as well. So that's all pretty cool stuff. And then we can look at the uh, raw render. So here's the raw render, right? Lots of things we can do. Final comp, lots of color grades, lots of things we can do here. So that's generally my thought process on how to develop these CG shots. Uh, we're gonna go in much more detail on, on specific techniques and things like that, but hopefully that gives you a general overview of this type of composite.